Radio Shouty. You know, being in the studio with John and really just being able to collaborate on them hits, though, man. I mean, what was that creative process for y'all when y'all were going there and say, you know what, it's time to cook up and we need to hit in this thing? And that, you know, I, I consider myself. A, one of the Scotty Pippins of the in- industry. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, not saying, I'm uh, definitely not MJ. MJ. You know what I'm saying? But I can bounce, I like to bounce ideas off, yeah. of, off of people. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And that's how we come up with great, with, with great shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just the process of bouncing ideas off of each other. Yes, sir. And that's how I was with John. You know what I'm saying? That's how that's how it is now. You know what I'm saying? With me and Casper, with me and Chef. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Me and Devin on the beat. Like we get in there, we bounce ideas off each other. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's how you you truly come up with the great shit. Answer me this though, Bo, because see, that's the other thing that I want to ask. You know. You got a chance to experience something that, you know, most people don't ever get a chance to experience. A lot of folks do music. A lot of folks want to be able to be on that main stage. Folks want to be able to have that smash hit. They want to have that song that still getting played on the radio 20 years later. What was that experience like when that thing hit, hit, and your mama them knew it hit? Yeah. i never forget we had, when we had went on the tour and we went over to Australia. And um, my grandma, you know, bless her soul, I'm a genius, she was still alive. Yeah. And I called my grandma from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> and like, it, like you know what I'm saying? And she didn't know where Australia was, she just knew it was a long way away. Hell yeah. But just the fact of how proud she was, you know what I'm saying? And, be, and being over there, and these people don't know me from a can of paint, but these people know my song. They say in my verse, I can just say the first line, and they'll repeat my whole verse. You know what I'm saying? Like, just a blessing that that song, what that song did for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, it's a whole different experience, man. Like when you can, when you can just, when people can rap some acapella. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's, you know, it's a blessing. At that time, in that crunk era, because, see, that was one of the things that I feel like also was the tipping point for Atlanta that just kind of made the city a heavyweight in the game, and it was really no turning back after that. You see what I'm saying? Everything had been kind of leading up to that point, but that crunk era, to me, feels like it was the boiling point to where it was like, okay, Atlanta's the place to be. Crunk yeah. is where it's at. Yeah. This is the move. This is the energy. This is the vibe. I'm moving down there because them boys down there getting crunk. What was that like being a part of that movement, though? I think I think during our era, it's like when um, when the artists started going to other cities, kicking it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like before then, it was kind of like a I don't know what kind of shit they on. They don't know what kind of shit we. You know what yeah. I'm saying. But like our era. Maybe we were naive, maybe it was whatever, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But, like, we would go to New York and kick it. Yeah. <laughs> in New yeah. York. We would go, you know, to Cali and kick it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What y'all do on y'all block? You know what I'm saying? How y'all <laughs> kick, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what started, you know, maybe a little bit more, you know, banging and this and yeah. that. But that's how um, the artists, I think, of our era, we started it off a little bit more because the artists before us were skeptical. Mm. And I guess we were so young, yeah, maybe naive, maybe just going home. Yeah. But we were starting to move around in the different cities. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I think that's what. And now they done took it all the way to a whole nother level. Facts. You know. But... I think that's one of the things that Crunk did too. Yeah, like from from a, a artist standpoint, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Being in there with John, man, and watching him produce, did you know from that Chitlin circuit to Damn and all of that Crunk music that that guy was gonna go down as an icon his damn self? Yeah, man. I you know one thing about John, he he one of the best at the mute the politics of music mm. and knowing how to work that at you know at being a student of the game of it yeah knowing okay they going to they going for this tempo right now mm. 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? Now I done switched up. They had double they, this tempo. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And he was always always a student of the game from that standpoint. So mm -hmm. I salute him. You know what I'm saying? I salute him on that.